Hello everyone, this is Professor Hoffman. This is part two of chapter five video. And now we're gonna talk about winter precipitation. So the four major types of precipitation that we're gonna look at is snow, sleet, freezing rain, and then just plain rain. So those are the things that we look at. But these three that you see here, snow, sleet, and freezing rain, generally occur in the winter months when we have cold air and temperatures at zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. So this is what we're gonna be looking at. The one simple one that we, we can see is snow. Snow is very simple because when you look at the temperature profile, so here's a little diagram of the atmosphere. This line right here is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the ice point. So that's where you get ice forming. Remember, you can go from a liquid to a solid. At 32 degrees, we go to a solid. So this is gonna be snow and notice this cold, deep layer here. So all layers are below 32 degrees, we can have snow. Now sleet is a little different. Notice you have a little window of above 32 degrees. So you have some melting. So it's cold, warm, and then cold. So you have a snowflake. It partially melts in that shallow warm air. And then down here, these are little ice pellets or sleet. So the snowflake falls, melts, and then refreezes into a little pellet or a little ice ball. So sleet and ice pellets are the same thing. But the form um, formation of this is cold, warm, cold. So it starts off high up in the sky in a cloud. And then as it drops, it melts and then refreezes as it gets closer to the ground. That's very important because sleet is ice or ice pellets and so is hail, but hail and sleet are formed very, very differently. And we'll talk more about hail in just a minute. Now we are looking at freezing rain. So here's 32 degrees again, which is the ice point. Notice our deep warm layer now. So you have a long area above 32 degrees. So you start off as a snowflake. As it falls to the ground, It completely melts, and that's our little raindrop right there. Those are our little raindrops. So warm air above 32 degrees, snowflake completely melts, then we get rain. And then what happens is, as we get down to the ground, it's gonna refreeze. There's gonna be a real small layer of cold air. So car tops, roadways, buildings, those things are frozen. So freezing rain, Freezing rain. So what happens is you have rain that freezes on contact. So you have snow, complete melting of the snowflake. Then as it hits the ground, it freezes. That is freezing rain. Okay. Freezing rain can be very dangerous because a lot of people can see it on roadways and it's ice. So it's very difficult to drive when you have freezing rain. So the three major winter precipitations are snow when all layers are cold. Sleet, when you have cold, then warm, then a big layer of cold air again, where you have that partially melted snowflake refreezing into an ice pellet. Then freezing rain, you get complete melting of the snowflake and a very small layer. This could be like maybe 50 feet, 100 feet at the immediate ground where rain hits it and it'll freeze right away. Okay, so very shallow cold layer. So notice the temperature profile again, okay? So that's what we look at. Melted snowflakes, freezing on the ground, okay? So 32 degrees and colder, it's all snow. 32 degrees, followed by a layer of above 32 degrees, warm layer, partial melting, then a deep enough layer to refreeze everything, that is sleet or ice pellets. Freezing rain, notice that warm deep layer here, and shallow cold layer, so the rain freezes on contact at the ground. That is freezing rain. And then for just plain rain, all levels are warming up above 32 degrees and everything melts, that would be freezing rain. So uh, that would be rain, plain rain, I should say. So these are the three majority things that we look for and that are very difficult to forecast in the winter. So what happens when you're forecasting? You're a meteorologist, okay? 
What happens if you're off by one degree? Well, if you're off by one degree, let's say, you know, the temperature is 33 degrees at the ground. Well, then you could have rain. What if you thought all the levels was going to be 32 degrees, but then, you know, a thousand feet in the atmosphere goes to 33 or 34 degrees, then you get melting. So your snowfall forecast now it has to add sleet and you could have lower snowfall totals. What if you're really wrong at the mid layers and you have a warm layer coming in and everything rains and you go to freezing rain? If you're forecasting six inches of snow and the temperature changes a little bit here, your forecast is gonna change, okay? So that could be a big difference. So think about when you listen to a weather forecast and a snowfall forecast, a lot of times you'll hear, you know, tomorrow night into Friday or something, um, we're gonna get three to six inches of snow. So you have to know your moisture, you have to know the temperatures, not only at the ground, but up through the entire profile. So think about your body, think about your feet, your waist, and your head. To get snow, your head, your waist, and your feet need to be 32 degrees. To get sleep, your head has to be 32 degrees or colder, your waist is probably like 34, 35 degrees, and in your feet, colder than 32 degrees. Now for a freezing rain, your head is 32 degrees, your waist is probably 38 to 40 degrees, and in your feet, probably around 32 to 28 degrees. That's how you would get freezing rain. So these are the things that you, you need to look at, and when you're trying to forecast, think about when you're driving around Long Island, how the temperatures are so different from Farmingdale to Smithtown to Garden City to Montauk. Now think about that in the atmosphere. So if you're off by a couple degrees, that six to 12 inch snowfall can turn to one inch of rain. That one inch of rain can turn to six to 12 inches of snowfall. So it becomes very difficult sometimes to forecast heavy snow or snow in general. This is one of the diagrams from your book, okay? Um, I forget what page is on. I think it may be page 136, um, but it's in chapter five and you can't miss it. So notice the temperature profile once again. Red is warm, blue is cold. So when you have all layers, look at that, 68 degrees, all layers generally above, you're gonna have rain. All layers below 32 degrees, you're gonna have snow, cold air. So when you look at the difference where a lot of people get confused by, notice right here. Here's the freezing line here, and here's the freezing line here. That's the major difference between freezing rain and sleet. How deep is the cold air at the ground and how deep is the warm air above the ground? Shallow warm air, sleet. Greater warm air, freezing rain. So it all starts off as snow. Snow melts, rain refreezes sleet. Snow melts, completely melts the rain right at the bottom Glaze and freezing rain are the same thing. So freezing rain, very shallow air layer of cold air. So snow completely melts, the rain freezes on the ground. Snow, snow partially melts, everything freezes again and then you get sleep. So understanding um, how that works, understanding precipitation. So to get precipitation, you need clouds. And for snow, sleet, or freezing rain, this is the cloud you're looking at, that nimbo stratus. Low clouds, ground is saturated, moisture is low to the ground, relative humidity is high. Nimbo stratus, dark gray, precipitation all day long. Stratus cloud, notice it's white. Again, the nimbo stratus and the cumulonimbus, those are our rain makers. Nimbo stratus is a snow maker as well when you have cold air. So understanding where you have warm air and where you have cold air. Again, it all starts as snow. And then when it's cold enough, it stays as all snow. When you have a little bit of warm air, it refreezes to ice pellets. When you have a lot of warm air and only a shallow, you have freezing rain. And then obviously when you have a warm, layer, a very deep layer, you have all rain, okay? So these are the precipitation types we generally see in the winter. Rain, 
snow, sleet, and freezing rain. Now again, the difference with sleet, it's an ice pellet, snow, but notice how it's falling through the atmosphere. So it's cold, it melts, and it refreezes. That's different than hail. Hail typically happens in warm weather situations, okay? Now remember above the ground, whether it's July or August or January, temperatures above the ground, they get colder. And when you're at 20, 30, 40,000 feet, it gets really, really cold. So you have a freezing line every day. So what happens is in a thunderstorm, air rises, condenses, you get cloud cover and also raindrops. And then you get freezing. That raindrop freezes when it's really, really cold. That raindrop falls down to the ground. It melts as rain. But if there's another updraft coming in, it gets pushed back up into the sky. It melts and refreezes, melts and refreezes. That is the difference on how hail works. Remember, sleet starts off as snow, melts and refreezes. Hail starts off as rain, gets pushed back up into the atmosphere, refreezes, falls down to the ground, melts again, pushed back up, falls down, pushed back up, and eventually when it's heavy enough, comes back down to the ground. So hail and sleet, they're both ice, but they are formed very, very, very differently. And we can get very large hailstones. Um, this particular one in South Dakota, eight inches. Imagine that hitting cars or falling. That's pretty dangerous stuff. So how do we measure snow, sleet, freezing rain? We have Doppler radar. Doppler radar could let us know by using this horizontal pulse. And it sends out a horizontal vertical pulse, receives it. And that lets us know the size of a raindrop. So Doppler radar is really, really important to scientists. It can give us an idea on what type of precipitation and how much, type, uh, how much precipitation may fall to the ground. So these are all Doppler radar images. So basically what you need to know is Doppler radar could pick up and understand precipitation type, snow, sleet, freezing rain, and also how much precipitation can fall. So these are just images of Doppler radar and understand where the pink is your freezing rain, okay, uh, or glaze, your purple is your mix, your blue is your snow. So this is an example on Long Island a few years back where we had freezing rain, uh, a sleet mixture, then over to snow. So it's great that all this moisture falls down, but how do you measure? One of the ways we measure liquid is through a simple rain gauge, a standard rain gauge, or this tipping bucket rain gauge. So what happens with this tipping bucket rain gauge, there's a heater in here. So even when it's snow, it, it's melted and it comes down here. And these little diodes get triggered every time liquid hits it and it goes to recorder. So what happens, it lets us know, it hits triggers, 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 triggers. So we could have a hundredth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, uh, one inch of liquid, two inches of liquid. So these rain gauges are able to measure liquid. So the tipping rain gauge could also measure uh, potentially how much snowfall. Because liquid equivalent to snowfall, you may have heard this before, that one inch of liquid at 32 degrees Fahrenheit um, can equal about 10 inches of snow, roughly about 10. Now, if it's colder and let's say it's 25 degrees, one inch of liquid could be, you know, 15 inches of snow. That's what we call a snow ratio. So when you're looking at how to measure, how do we measure rainfall? Doppler radar is one. The standard rain gauge, we have a simple rain gauge, a standard rain gauge, and we have this tipping bucket rain gauge where we can measure and it lets us know in this collecting funnel how much wet weather has fallen. And then for snow, you know, trying to forecast a snowfall, how much snow is going to fall? What's the storm track? How much liquid? Any changes in these variables, one, you know the weather, you've seen the weather, you've looked at your weather app, weather is constantly changing. A 50 mile difference in track can make a huge difference in weather. And that's the difference between a storm going over Montauk and a storm going over Ma Manhattan. So when you're looking at storms, any change, it's very, it's like winning the lotto or forecasting a storm. So that's one of the things that's very difficult. How much liquid will fall? How, what's the temperature? If you're off by one degree temperature, if you're off by a half inch of liquid, you could have a very difference in snowfall. 
Blizzards, very difficult sometimes to measure blizzards. Blizzards, you have, you know, winds at 50 miles an hour, 40 miles per hour, 35 miles per hour. So, by the way, the definition of a blizzard is three consecutive hours of one quarter visibility or less with snow falling. So, and here's our examples on how to measure snow. You could use a ruler and you could also measure snowfall estimates by Doppler radar and also using a snow ratio conversion. So there's just a lot of different examples of, you know, understanding how snow works. You need cold air, you need liquid, you need something to get air to rise, and that's what rainfall to. So to get precipitation, you need rising air, condensation, okay, and then the energy will move the liquid down or the snowflake down. So remember in chapter four, when we talked about a gas, that's rising air, condensation, that's a liquid, then if it's cold enough, it's a solid. So that's how we work our four ways to get air to rise, condensation, stable air, unstable air, and how does the air come down to the ground? So understanding you know, the difference in precipitation, rain, snow, sleet, freezing rain, and hail, they all form slightly different, and you can get an idea. And don't forget to read chapter five, and chapter five is about the 10 cloud types. So you have your cirrus, three of those, two alto stratus, okay? And you have five lower clouds, nimbo stratus, stratus, stratocumulus, cumulus, and your vertical development cloud with cumulus is that cumulonimbus, that's our thunderstorm cloud. So those are all the different things that you're gonna be looking at in chapter five. Please read chapter five book, go over the online notes. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. This is part two. Uh, that you need to go over 10 types of clouds, different types of precipitation, how do they form. All right, I'm Professor Hoffman. We will talk to you, you guys later. Bye-bye.